welcome back to another video. These videos are like so out of date. This video, I probably recorded it like a week ago. I'm on my way right now to go buy a multimeter. We'll get into all that and the charger build here in a little bit once we get back to the crib. So stick around, man. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed yet. Let's get it. So we're in the work car. First stop of the day is Lowe's. And I didn't come down with my camera, so if the image is a little bit more different, it's because I'm actually recording on my phone because some people get weird out when you bust out a camera. Obviously, you know, you got TikTokers and all kinds of crazy stuff that ruin recording in stores because they throw a bunch of stuff and that crazy. All right, so let's check out to see what they got, boys. Let's see. All right, so. I'm pretty sure these are good. Yeah, they got some all right pretty nice ones yeah they got some pretty nice ones guys but man i'm telling you that craftsman that i had got that i always buy man that thing always is the truth so let me keep looking let me keep looking i don't think they're gonna have any although those does carry craftsman but i don't think they got any of what i'm looking for here today yeah yeah there's nothing so i think i'm just gonna go to um Harbor Freight and just buy a multimeter, just a quick one. I can't see myself paying $34 for even like this regular one. I'm pretty sure it's good, but it's not what I want. You see what I'm saying? Now we are actually at good old trusty Harbor Freight. And here I know we'll find something real quick, man. We, like I said, I just need something for today. Nothing too crazy. I may get on Amazon a little bit later on and order the Craftsman one just to have it. All right, so here we go, here we go. Like, I mean, even this guy right here would work. We just need AC current. Right there. That's right there where we need that 200. So I am gonna get this and then I'll probably just get some zip ties because I know we'll always need some. And just like that, we got everything, man. Let's go cash out and get back to the spot. So this is the multimeter. And man, this thing comes with batteries, which is actually pretty crazy. I wouldn't figure it would. Um, I mean, it's got some nice weight on it, but I know it's a little cheap guy. So look, it's already acting crazy, back to zero. Um, but I mean, just to get the job done today, I mean, it is what it is, guys. Look, I think that guy in that charger, they're jamming out. Um, but anyways, so we're gonna get back to the crib right now, man. We're gonna get started on the charger and let you know what's going on with it, man. So stay tuned, subscribe, man, let's get it. Right, so we're back at the house, man. Let's check out the charger real quick, show you what's going on with it and let you know what we're gonna do with it, man. Let's get it, check this charger out, man. That thing is clean. front door panels with some scar mids and a tympano tweeter man this thing looks pretty dope we have a pioneer radio we have a sky high bass knob right here looks pretty dope too and then we have some more scar tweeters with some pillars and these things gotta be loud we have some rear door panels with two 12s and one 10 and one tympano horn in it as well too man some tympano mids man that's very dope man he put them the mids in the back of the door and we have two 12 inch FI subs with a ported box and the SMD fuse holder as well too. Here man, we have my favorite, the Terra Amps uh, right here. We have uh, two smart AKs, uh, more distribution block, man, some very, very badass sky high wire. We have the Terra Amps MD3000.1, the DS4000. Then we have the TS800 slash four. And down there we have a DS18, um, DSP. This is actually the same owner of the vert guys after we got done with the vert He actually dropped this charger off and he actually built and wired up this whole system But he just wanted to go ahead and little give it a little bit more fine-tuning So that's why he dropped it off here. We're gonna go ahead and tune this guy um, As good as possible make sure everything is good and connected as well. He actually uh, built everything pretty much I think he actually built the box as well too and that's one of those type of ports where you can chop and extend it um looks pretty dope man i like the setup um rear doors man he actually was able to fit the 212s and the 10 and the horn back there man big thumbs up to you big dog and very big props to him man he got all these amps inside here looking pretty good um but we're just gonna go ahead and just make sure that things are buckled up pretty good and tuned 
Um, so whenever he picks up the car, man, this thing is talking pretty, pretty loud. I haven't really listened to the car and I'm actually going to do it right now. I just want to hear how it sounds. Uh, the equalized settings on the radio were actually flat, um, which is actually good and bad. Um, I usually leave everything flat if I got like uh, an external uh, tympano or a Clarion EQ, but since it's, you know, just the radio, then amps, it's somewhat good to adjust it um, just a little bit. So at least you can like really define the sound. He has the DSP, but the only thing that I wouldn't do is do like crossover settings on the radio just because, you know, it's going to be filtered out through the radio and I don't want to get it filtered out before the actual, you know, crossover then to the amps. I'd rather just it all get filtered out through the crossover itself and into the amps so it can play, you know, the best sound as possible from the amps to the speakers. Let's actually hop inside the car real quick and just put some copy uh, right free music on real quick to see how it sounds and in the bass. That I will say guys, you can feel the weight from all the product in this car. Like the car is very, very heavy. You can feel it. Um, this is just like your typical Dodge Charger. It's not like a Hellcat or a Scat Pack or nothing. So like, man, when you like, um, like drive the car, Oh, man, you feel that weight, so it's very heavy. So there's a lot of product in here, man, and that's that's good because it's got good magnets in here. So let's uh, play a little bit of sound and see how it sounds, um, and then we'll go from there. All right, so let's hit cancel. Let's turn the volume up. Right off the bat, man, there's heavy mid bass on the front doors. Oh, yeah, that's a lot of mid bass. Right off the bat guys, there is a lot of mid bass coming in through the mids. I can just hear it. And so I'm gonna go ahead and say if there's a lot of mid bass going through the mids, there's gonna be a lot of mid bass going through the actual tweeters and the horns. So that actually could be bad because when you turn it up and you're sending that like frequency signal, whatever you wanna call it to that, man, them things are not gonna last that long and you're gonna blow it and that's not gonna be good for it. Um, the mids, we do want it to get a little bit of mid bass action, but not to the point where it's not, you know, able to turn up the volume and not get it loud. So we're going to go ahead and adjust that here in a little bit. And the bass, we are going to tone generate it, and we're going to try to guess uh, the best output on it. That's why we went ahead and bought the multimeter to get AC current, so we can get them both playing at the same time. We can get the subs playing both uh, in the same face at the same time. Because, like I said earlier, no matter how much you can turn it up and you want to turn both of the amps up halfway on the amp, it's not going to be throwing the same um, power signal out. And, like, it'll play little by little, like, um, out of phase. And it'll sound good, but it'll never be, like, equal bass. You see what I'm trying to say? So we're going to tackle that as well, too. But, man, I'm pretty sure we can get this car pretty loud, guys. Uh, it's just a matter of just making sure that it's tuned good and man, everything comes out good. So let me go ahead and figure out a couple things and then we're going to get on the grind tuning this thing up. And just like that, we just cleaned up the RCAs. They're still all connected, but now we actually got them ran pretty good and zip tied out the way just so it doesn't look a little bit too crazy. So now what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to unplug the 800 and the 4000 and I think this is actually connected for the front doors and the the tweeters and the pillars and we're gonna adjust this one a little bit and just get a little bit of that mid bass out because that thing was mid basing like crazy they're playing everything's played right now but let's go ahead and unplug RCA's plug that one Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, so let me see, let me see. Yeah, so I think that three thousand is actually connected to that. I think the three thousand is actually connected to some of that stuff right there. Let me see. Let me see. Okay, so that 3000 is actually connected to the, these ridge right here. Okay, so that 3000, I feel that it's just on the rear doors. Connect this again. Sending a lot of mid bass out to Yeah. Oh yeah. So okay, so the 3000 is connected to the 412s and the 210s. So let's disconnect this. And now let's connect this guy up. Okay. So this one right here. The 4000 is actually connected to the front doors. Let's see if the doors over here are working. Connected. This guy may be blown. So I pretty much got an idea of what's going on. So the 3000 is actually connected to the 412s and the 210s that are in the rear doors. This 4000 slash 4 is, is actually connected to the mids uh, on the doors, which is the 6.8s and the two horns and the two tweeters. And the 800 slash 4, it is actually connected to the two horns in the back and the four horns that are actually in the front pillars. Now the only thing that I will say, you know, MD, uh, DS, and TS is the MD is gonna have like um, your gain, your high pass, and your low pass, which is actually, that's what you're gonna want, you know, to um, have the best sound for the mids, you see what I'm saying? So, I mean, that's all fine and dandy, but you know, the, you have a little bit more preference setting, but you know, that's why the DSP comes into play and you can actually filter all that stuff out. And same thing with the radio, you can, um, you know, turn it up and mess with the EQ settings, turn down some bass, so at least you have a little bit more, you know, volume to play with. But, you know, we're gonna work out those bugs and make sure that he can play it at a very loud level and still get down, be loud, and not worry about, you know, stuff blowing out. But that horn is possible that it could be blown. Uh, we'll pull it out here in a little bit and check it out. We're gonna get this thing loud, man. So I'm gonna check in with you guys here in a little bit and give you guys a little bit of progress uh, update. When the customer dropped off the car, he says I can either keep the DS18 uh, crossover in there, the DSP, I could keep it in there if I really wanted to, or if not, and if I felt that the Terra Amps would be the way to go, um, I could go ahead and do that. So there's many factors that come into play right now. Um, if I'm going to be the one tuning this, I'm pretty sure a lot of people would probably prefer the DSP, the digital, whatever. But, you know, I like the actual control knobs. And with so many factors coming into play right now with amps, um, I feel that the tear amps would probably be the best way to go. Just because, you know, like I said earlier, the MD series, if I do like um, tear amps for mids and highs, I'm always prefer the MD series. Just because they have a lot more settings. And like the DS and the TS, they just pretty much just have like um, high pass, low pass, full range. And then they have um, just a gain up and down. So pretty much you're, you got your hands tied and you can't really define the sound just however you want to. So um, it really does uh, put a damper on a lot. But at the same time, um, 
you know, you can still get good, you know, good settings if we were to go ahead and use a nice um, DSP or crossover with all the settings and the filters and stuff like that. So I really feel that even if I do the DSP or the tear amps, either one would work perfect. But, you know, my preference, I like the dial uh, knob ones just because, man, they're easy to um, control, handle, and adjust if need, you know, if you got to. And plus, uh, the customer says he's starting to get to car audio and he did build all this stuff, but sometimes he doesn't understand some stuff. So it's rather, you know, a lot better for him to like start off using this and then slowly work his way up and learn how to do the DS18 um, crossover DSP setting. For what he's got going on in all the different speakers, I think the Terra Amps is the best route to go. So I think we're just going to go ahead and put the Terra Amps uh, crossover in there just because, man, it's going to probably work a little bit more better and user friendly for him. And we can be able to really um, into detail adjust the settings and get this thing to sound like really, really good. So, I mean, let's go ahead and open this guy up. Get it installed and we can start adjusting some stuff in here so i somewhat i put this uh shirt down just so we don't damage nothing and no wires touch or nothing on the crossover and i already turned it on and uh channels two and one yeah on the i think it's what's this one the on the ds 4000 these channels right here are mid, and this one is a mid as well too, so these actually need Y splitters. So we actually need to find the Y splitters that we had earlier, so we can put those on that so we know those need to share. And he has some pretty badass ones right here. He had another Y splitter as well too, so that one's going to go in right here. So these guys right here, they are actually going to come out the low mid out on the crossover itself. I already somewhat adjusted it, so it sounds really good. Um, but we are going to tweak it once we get everything connected. I just want to know what's going on with what. So this one plays um, horns on the actual uh, the rear doors and on the front doors as well too. And the pillar uh, tweeters go on the um, 800, I think. So we're going to keep testing a few things out and then we're going to come back. Um, and just make sure that every all the RCAs go where they need to go. And then we'll come back and really adjust this guy up. And man, this thing's going to sound good. I know that it already started sounding good because some of the settings were a little bit different than what I'm used to setting the amps. You know, like I say, um, setting the high pass and the low pass on the tear amps makes a big difference as well on the actual crossovers. And if you want that talk game, man, you got to know how to set that low pass and that high pass, man, to get that talk game out of it. So we're going to keep working on it right now. I'm going to turn the camera back on in a little bit and share a little bit more stuff what's going on. Crossover is in down there. You guys can see it. I had to put it upside down because I didn't want the RCAs um, getting caught up in the bottom. And the settings, I mean, you can get to them very easy. And we track RCAs. You see they're very nice and neat. And I was just waiting to connect them. You know, all that stuff ran pretty nice. And so I'm actually going to go ahead and zip tie this up. Uh, I don't like doing the tape no more, guys, because... Um, it's just so easy just to clip and re, you know, attach a new zip tie without making a mess because, you know, the electrical tape does leave some gunk. But I was using it to tape up uh, powers while I was, like, moving stuff. So, you know, that's pretty good. Pretty much all the amps are in and the settings are somewhat um, adjusted. Uh, right now, I can go ahead and just, like, play a little bit of music and hear how it sounds. Um, but I'll probably do a testing with, like, regular music and then I'll turn the camera back on. Um, then I'll come back, you know, and do some copyright free music so you guys can hear how this thing sounds. Um, bass wise, it sounds pretty good. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and finish this up. Uh, give it a little adjustment and then let you guys hear, man. Drop down in the comments. What do you guys think? Terra Amps, was that a good win or not? Um, this is the DS18 crossover, but you got to connect this one up and download the software for it. But, you know, I don't know. It's not my type of thing. Maybe later on in the future we can mess with it, but for right now, Man, the Terra Amps is where it's at. Those uh, regular um, knobs, man, they're pretty good. So let's finish this guy up, and then, you know, we'll hear how it sounds. All right, guys, so I think for the most of it, man, this thing is tuned. Sounds really good. Um, here in a little bit, we'll go to the park right down the road, and I'll let you guys hear it real quick. Obviously, here I am in the residential area, so I can't even jam this thing like that. Um, so we don't actually have to gain match these amps. These amps, you can actually strap them. So, and they're actually strapped right now. So I think these guys are set, ready to rock and roll. Uh, the bass sounds pretty good. I did have it at like negative six, just so we don't have to like really 
uh, mess with the bass. It's already like pumped up pretty good. It hits pretty low, like really, really nasty low. We'll hear the bass here in a little bit. Um, but other than that, man, um, the amps are pretty much done and set in stone. I think it sounds pretty good. The DS, you know, these are actually pretty good. Um, but the only thing that um, really sucks about these amps, they only really have like high pass, low pass um, crossover switch on them. So they don't really have an actual crossover setting that you can really get down to adjustment. And they only have like gain up and gain down. So they really don't have a lot of good adjustments. Um, MDs, I'm always going to recommend the MD series for mids and highs. Whether if you're doing like mids or horns, man, these guys are always the go-to guys. Um, the DS one, same thing. You know, it just uh, has the three switch, high pass, low pass, full um, switch on it and gain up and down. But it doesn't really give you the option to really like set the frequency gain. Um, but that's where the actual tear amps crossover came into play because we have all those options in there. And we pretty much dialed them in, you know, pretty good. So these things are talking. Boys, so this is actually a few days later. Look, man, your boy's looking clean with the haircut. Um, and they're actually going to pick up this car later on tonight and we're just going to go over real quick Just make sure everything's fine the other day when I was working on the car, you know, I actually worked into where it started getting kind of late and um, Yeah, I just left it the way how it was I didn't get actually get to go test it out at that park because there were just so many people playing baseball So today right before they pick it up man, I'm gonna go ahead and show you what we got going on We actually went in ahead and put the terror amps crossover which is down there guys i put it upside down just so we can get to the rcas and the settings a little bit better um we actually retract all the rcas they look pretty good we got them zip tied everything looks good everything's pretty stealth looks pretty good before that big mess of rcas was right there but now you can actually clear and see what's going on and then the base actually gets down um it gets pretty low and you know we could set it as much as we want to on the radio guys but like i said uh the TS and the DS don't actually have that extra high pass and low pass uh, crossover settings on the actual amp. So it's kind of hard to really get a good adjustment. You know, you're just going to always get a lot of mid bass out of it unless you really adjust it pretty good. Go ahead and open all the four doors, guys. And, you know, we're going to play some quick music to let you guys hear it. It sounds really good. Even inside, guys, you know, it is pretty, pretty loud. And, you know, when I first got in the car, when I would initially, you know, turn up the music, um, I wouldn't even get past, like, 10 on the radio. And, like, that mid-bass would just sound so deep and, like, crazy. Like, I didn't want to blow anything out. But now that we got it adjusted, man, we can get the volume up to at least 30 or 28. I think it goes up to, like, 40-something. But I think, like, at 30, man, it's pretty good. I actually, it's not a Bluetooth, so I can't even, you know, um, control the volume while I'm in the back. So I just have to set some music and then we'll hop to the back and let you hear it. We just gave it a quick little test guys nothing too crazy because at the end of the day this is not our car um, we just wanted to fine tune it and play it a little bit and the customer when he gets here he can do all the jamming and turn it up as loud as he want because it is his car we can only jam it to a certain point but i can honestly say guys man this one was actually a pretty good build 
um, for the customer doing it himself. It was his first time building door panels, and he, I mean, he got it. You know what I'm saying? He got it. It's done, and it's plain. Um, and I understand them sometimes. Some people, um, it's hard for them to adjustment because um, nowadays they have all these like tools and stuff like that, and um, the the adjustments uh the dsps and if you know you're just gonna jump right into it you may pick it up quick or it may be your worst nightmare and you'll never actually get a fine tune that's what i say you know me i love the manuals because we can get a nice tune out of it but you know some people like to do the dsp with the laptop and all that stuff but you know i don't you know it still sounds good sure it could probably sound a little bit better but man you know it's not a car for competition it's not a car to like you know whatever it's the customer's car he just wants to get in it ride put the windows down and jam out a little bit and it's good for it so i hope you guys enjoyed that video if you guys are watching this we're probably caught up with all the videos and um we're gonna start dropping some fresh ones man so definitely stay tuned man subscribe to the channel and on the next one man we'll talk about a lot of stuff man but till then hope you have a good one man i hope my boy enjoys that car i appreciate the business on the vert and on the charger and man i'll see you on the next one so with all that being said guys man keep grinding and man turn that system up loud and get a ticket peace